Welcome back guys to the 34 year old Honda TRX 70 rebuild project. Today we're going to be doing some more assembly. I'm also going to show you how I make some custom gaskets as well as a whole bunch of other stuff. Stick around. adjuster and clean it up and lubricate it. So we'll move this up real nice, get this working nice and smooth. So now we got all our parts cleaned and now we just got to put it back together. And I don't do anything fancy to clean the parts. All I do is just use a degreaser. If they're really bad, uh, what I do is I spray it down with a uh, kerosene that I have in a squirt bottle and just use a uh, nylon bristle brush and then wash everything down afterwards with a degreaser. That's it. I don't do anything fancy. And as far as lubricating everything, we're going to use uh, brake caliper grease. It's uh, formulated just for brake parts. So that's what we're going to use. And I'm going to put it on this as well. This is going to work nice and smooth. So we'll put that on. We'll start with that. Then we'll put on some of our synthetic brake lubricant. And that keeps things from getting corroded too, you know. Oh yeah. All of this stuff is going to be real hard to see guys because my hands have to be in here and my hands are big so it's going to block everything you see. Yeah, that works real nice now. Nice and smooth. So for the rear brake pads, they're not OEM and they're asbestos free. The shop manual calls for a little bit of uh, grease on the pins where the brake shoes ride, so we'll we'll do that. We'll put a little bit on that. Let's see, we'll spread <laughs> the bottom. And then we'll spread the top all the way. Wow. Yeah, that's a tight fit. nice oh yeah look at that guys yep that operates real nice look at that all right now to put on the brake drum ha! oh yeah that looks pretty sweet guys all right, we gotta find out where we gotta to torque those hubs at. So I'm gonna set this for the lowest torque value, which is 43 to, I think 58 is what it said, or 56. So I gotta to set to 43. It's a little difficult doing it uh, by yourself without the tires on it. Yeah, we're good there. So now I just gotta do the other side. And the reason I think that they have that little bit of a difference because at 43, this uh, castle nut doesn't quite line up so I can get a uh, car pin through, so I gotta go a little bit tighter so it lines up. Almost. Yep, that lines up there. We're good there. Okay. When you guys see me getting ahead of myself, you're supposed to say something. Feel free to jump in. How am I gonna get this drum cover on now? with this wheel hub on. That's not going to work. I got to take it apart again. 
You guys didn't say nothing. Come on, guys, help me out. Now I'm going to use my fancy schmancy stainless steel bolts that I picked up at the hardware store. Add a little custom look to it. Sometimes it's one step forward and two steps back, just the way it is when you do projects like this. I'm gonna take the key out and do it that way. Now pull the key out. No, pull the key out. It's out. It's out. Did some new parts come in for your four for your four wheeler? What's that? No, what's that what's in that? Where's that go? Can you show everybody the part number? Mom, Papa, we have. Uh -huh. <gasps> wow, look. Look at that, Colton. What's that? That covers up the little side cover. What's that? That covers up the clutch cover. What's that? That's the foot peg. That's the other foot peg. That's where you put your feet on. Mm. Okay, to take the key out, you gotta turn that all the way that way. Yep. Ow. Are you gonna do wheelies with this? Yeah. You are? <laughs> so I see a lot of these Honda quads actually missing this piece, and I wanna show you something. So if you go to like a regular uh, parts diagram, it shows right there that that's part number two. And then you come down here, part number two is called a protector for a right crankcase cover and the number is 11359680000. Okay, that is obsolete. It's no longer made. You can't find it. Well, you can. Uh, if you do find it, you're going to pay a lot of money for it. So this right here, which is the genuine Honda part number, 11335102700, that's this. And it's the same thing. And I'll show you exactly how this goes on. Let me show you all the way around it. It fits great. And I'll show you how it goes on. It fits just like it should. So I'll try to put this on with one hand. You can see that how there's a groove down in there and it fits around this clutch adjustment washer and you just kind of stretch it on. And I can actually see why a lot of these would uh, be missing on them because you know your kid gets on and rolls that edge and then it falls off and then it gets set aside somewhere so that you can continue riding without fiddling about putting this back on and then it doesn't get put back on so yep if you're looking for this part number and you're using the online parts locator you're not going to probably find it you can use the part I just showed you there it is so last week we tore the front end parts that's what these are right here it's these go on here and it holds the brakes well uh, the brake pads came in that's why we didn't assemble them in last week's episode I now have them so now we're going to put this all back together lubricate up everything really nice uh, so that it works super smooth and put this all back together and that's what a lot of this project has uh, entailed is just disassembly taking things down to their smallest of small components inspecting everything wiping it down using steel wool on it scrubby pads cleaning it up lubricating it and put it back together and we'll start out by lubricating the shaft got to have your shaft good lubricated grease your shaft real good uh, and then shove it in like that oh yeah nice and smooth and put on the dust seal and these are just the original felt dust seals that came with it they were nothing wrong with it so we're just going to reuse them and just tuck it down in there nice with a with a pick this little piece i discovered is an indicator it's a wear indicator to let you know how your brake pads are doing and it lines up with this so 
this is splined, it can only go on one way, so you really can't mess it up. So that goes like that. You really can't screw this up either because it has a little dot indicator in it. And that little dot indicator lines up with the dot right here on that shaft. I'm going to stick that through there. Just snug, snug that up for now, and we'll get the torque specs, but we'll make sure it's snug enough right now so it doesn't back off. And then we'll put on the spring. And that's that. And here's our brake pads. Our brake shoes actually That's what they are pads are flat shoes aren't the manual calls uh, to have some grease on the shaft don't need a lot you don't want to make a big mess down in here you know what I mean and we'll slide that on like that and I know I keep talking to you guys about taking good notes and labeling things good uh, I just you can't get deta too detailed in doing this stuff and uh, so I, I wrote I got four screws at the backing plate uh, covers which are these and uh, for the front brakes so what these do is that these keep tension on the pads just like that so now, when you move this arm on the back, like this, see how that works? That, that has a lot of tension bringing that back, see? So that one is done. We're good there, guys. I can't put the backing, this backing plate on yet until I get it onto this. Now I'm going to do the second one, then we'll come back and put them on the front end. Now it's time to install these completed assemblies onto the spindles. So I'm just going to put a little bit, of, a little bit of grease on the spindle. This doesn't spin around this spindle. This is just to keep uh, water from getting in there and corroding anything, rusting it. I think this might be hard for you guys to see, but I'm going to do my best to try to show you what I'm doing. So that goes in there like that, and that goes in like that. Now we can put on our cover. So again, we're going to grease our shaft. So check that out, guys. That looks pretty good, huh? I'm real happy with that. Yep, pretty fresh looking. Let's start getting some more pieces put back together on this. This shifter leaves a lot to be desired. So I think what we'll do is we're gonna end up doing something with this. We'll clean it up. I don't know if we'll paint it. Maybe we'll try to polish it. I don't know, we'll see what we can do. Uh, but for right now, let's get these side covers on. Get the chain on it, get the uh, chain adjusted, and get the bottom skid plate on. Like I showed you guys in last week's episode, this is the original chain. What I did was is I scrubbed it down with kerosene, then I washed it down with degreaser, and then I soaked it in some gear oil. It's been sitting in this bag since last episode.
Thicker gloves and bigger hands would be a huge help. There we go. All right. That's what I needed right there. Now what we gotta do is just adjust the chain. I think they want three eighths of an inch is what uh, the manual calls for, but I'll have to look. It's not a big deal, you just raise this up a little bit and that's, that's that. So that's easy. The tension on this is three eighths to three quarters. So that ought to be simple. So let's see. I got a ratchet underneath on the back side. We'll just snug it up a little bit. I'd rather have it a little loose than a little tight, you know what I'm saying? So this side cover goes on like this. And in between here was actually a gasket. And I don't really know what it does because there's no liquids that it's got to seal out. And there was also a gasket from this surface to this surface, which is for the pull cord. Well, it doesn't seal out any liquids, but it does obviously take up some space. So I'm going to make a gasket just so that all the mating surfaces are approximately where they should be. I didn't buy a gasket. I'm just going to make my own and I'll show you how I do this. I'm sure others can probably do a much better job, but this is how I do it for me and I've had pretty good luck with it. This is just regular gasket material you can buy at your auto parts store. I make it in all different thicknesses and different material types. First thing I do is I lay it out in a way that I can utilize, you know, get the most out of the gasket that I need and I've got to go from here that back this way so we'll start like that and now I'll just draw a quick shape of that and cut out around it so that's my rough shape right there and I'll just cut it out with some scissors so now that I got it rough roughed out. Now I take a nice sharp pencil and just trace out the outside of it. So I trace the inside and I trace the outside. I'm going to take the line on the outside and I made a note to leave the line on the inside. So the reason I take the line on the outside is that's so you don't see the gasket. It doesn't protrude beyond the case. So now I just cut that out with a pair of shots. So I know I've talked to you guys a lot about uh, eye injuries, but I've got perfect vision. And But I'll tell you what, these right here are a set of readers. What a difference wearing these in the workshop when you're doing stuff like this. I've been fortunate that uh, my eyes don't have permanent damage to them. I do have some floaties in them. Uh, from time to time, but yeah, no issues there. But pick yourself up a set of these, nothing fancy. They're from like Walmart, and these are like one and a half times or something. Everything is just so much clearer, guys. Even if you have good vision, everything is so much crisper. It just brings it up to you. You can do such a better job when you're doing detailed work. For you guys that are probably 30 and older, Maybe some of you know exactly what I'm talking about, but readers, oh my God, I've never tried them. I wore my wife's uh, about two weeks ago. Hers has like little rhinestones in the end. I've commandeered those. I love them. I, uh, I even when I like watch YouTube or something on my phone, I it just, I don't know, try them. Pick up a pair. It's a couple bucks. You'll love it. You'll thank me. No charge for that tip either, by the way. So there. There's that. Now I'll get the inside out of there. All right, I'm gonna get that close. I'm not gonna do a whole lot because I still got some sections I gotta remove out of this. I got some holes I gotta punch. And you can see how thin that gasket material is and I don't wanna take a chance of ripping it. 
right now while I'm working with it and manipulating it. So for right now, I'm gonna leave this long. So this is where you're gonna need some specialty tools or where these come in handy, but still not expensive. If you're doing these types of things, you know, a lot of these old things, old cars, old stuff like this, equipment, machinery, some of the stuff you can't get the gaskets for, and even if you can, uh, maybe it'll take a little while and you don't wanna wait. So you can always make your own. And it depends on what I'm doing. I mean, it's always nice and convenient to buy your own gasket and have it just be done. What this is, it's a transfer punch set. And you can see how these holes are real long, but I need to be able to mark where the center of that hole is or where that bolt hole is. So the way these work is that a transfer punch, the shoulder fits down through and it's got a center point, marking point on it. So what I'm gonna do is line the gasket up flush all the way around to where it needs to sit and I'll make it look really good and once I know exactly where that is I will take my transfer punch slide it down through the hole and make a mark and what that's going to do is put a dimple in my gasket and that's going to identify for me where I need that hole to be. And for us right here, we need three. Then we've also got the uh, shift collar. So let's see what size that is. We'll try a half inch for that. And half inch is gonna work good for that, so. All right, now we can remove our thing here. And there's our punch marks. Now we're on to a different tool that we need. So the next thing you're gonna need now is a hammer, piece of wood, and a gasket punch kit. And it's just what it sounds like. It's made to punch holes in gasket material. Our hole was quarter inch. That's what we used to drift that down through. And that's what we're gonna grab for a gasket punch. Real simple. This piece, as you can see right here, is actually sharp. It's ground to a point. So when you push on it, it'll make a hole through gasket. And this is the die that it goes on. So you just stick that on there and grab your gasket, line up, line up your marks. So for us, those little points that we made, we're gonna just center that in our gasket punch. And there we are. Put it on our die, give her a hit. It doesn't take much. Sometimes you gotta hit it more than once. And there it is. Look at that. Makes a nice punched hole in the gasket. There's that one. Yeah, then we gotta do our half inch hole for the shift link. And look at that guys. Everything lines right up. That one, that one, that one, and that one. So now, what we gotta do is we gotta trace out that inside. That's gonna be a little bit harder. I just, as you saw, just shaved it down with an X-Acto knife and we're good to go. Now all I got left to do is trim the interior of this. We're ready to put this side cover on. And there you go, guys. That's how you make a fairly complex gasket using some fairly simple common tools. This doesn't really seal anything out. The reason I'm really putting it in there is because I want to maintain the case thickness. So I don't know if it matters. It might. Uh, it had a gasket in there for a reason, so we're going to stick with it and continue to use it. So yeah, let's put this thing, let's put the side cover on now.
right there indicates when you're in neutral. So when you shift up, you can see how that moves down. And then when you go shift back down, it goes up to neutral. So you gotta clean that up, make it look a little better. It may seem like I'm kind of jumping all around here because I'm trying to get rid of parts. I'm trying to get parts off my uh, table, get this thing put back together as much as I can and finish everything as I go. Then you soak this filter in gear oil. So we'll give her a little. And then scrunch it out. And that's the genuine part number if you're looking for it. A little bit better than the one we took out, huh, guys? Can you see how the tires are turning now? Yeah. Did it turn pretty easy? Papa did a good job, didn't he? And that's all there is to it, guys. I want to thank you for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. If this is something that you like, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. As soon as we're done with this rebuild project, and we're only a few episodes away, I've got all kinds of welding episodes planned. I know that this is primarily why you guys come to this channel. If you're wondering about any of the tools that I'm using or any of the products that I'm using, I'll have links down in the description below. Please share it up, give a thumbs up. If you're wondering what I'm working on before it even makes it up to YouTube, you guys can catch me on Facebook and on Instagram. I'll have links down below. Until next week, guys, I will see you then. Stay safe, take care. New episodes every Friday.